Welcome to a video on the washer method for determining volume. This video will show rotation about the y-axis. And again, the washer method is very similar to the disk method. You could think of a washer as a hollow disk. So just to review, remember the disk method is based upon determining the volume of cylinders, which can also be called disks, where the volume is equal to pi r squared h, where r would be the radius, and this would be the height. And if the rotation was about the y-axis, this would be equal to delta y. For a washer, we'll have to determine the volume of the outer cylinder and subtract the volume of the inner cylinder. So this would be big R, and this would be little r. And again, this would be the height, and with this orientation would be equal to delta y. So we'll combine this idea with integration to determine the volume of a solid. So let's take a look at how we're going to do that. If we start with an area or region bounded by two functions, as we see here, and then rotate about the y-axis, it would produce a solid that looks like this. And the goal is to determine the volume of this using the washer method. And that would look something like this. If we have this solid rotated about the y-axis and try to determine the volume using very thin washers, here's a sample of eight different washers we could use. And as the number of washers approaches infinity, the accumulation of these volumes would equal the volume of the solid. So the key to setting up this integral that will give us the volume is to consider a representative rectangle bounded by these two functions that would represent one washer. So to do that, we have to make a rectangle that is perpendicular to the axis of rotation. So it would look something like this. And now, since the width or height of this rectangle is delta y, we will have to integrate with respects to y. If you take a close look at this integral formula, you can see the volume of a cylinder in here where we have pi, r squared, and then delta y would represent the heights. So the outer radius is big R of y, and that would be the distance from here to here. Now this distance is x, which must be expressed in terms of y, so we call this R of y for the outer radius. And the inner radius would be the distance from here to here. Again, that distance is equal to x, but it must be expressed in terms of y, so we call this little r of y. And then lastly, we'll integrate on the interval from c to d along the y-axis. So this would be c, and based upon this intersection point here, this would be d. So when we use the washer method, one of the most important things to remember is that the representative rectangle here in black will be perpendicular to the axis of rotation. Let's do an example. We want to determine the volume of the solid generated by the bounded region of the given equations. So we have y equals negative x squared plus four, that's the blue function. Then we have x equals one, the vertical line in red, and then we have y equals zero. So our region that we're gonna rotate will be this region here. And again, we're rotating about the y-axis. So we're rotating around here. And if we did that, we'd get a solid that looks just like this where it looks like a paraboloid where the top was cut off and it's also hollow. So we'll start by sketching a representative rectangle that's going to be perpendicular to the axis of rotation. So it'll look something like this. And the height of this rectangle is delta y. And that's why we have to integrate with respects to y. So let's go ahead and see if we can set this up. We're going to have the volume is equal to pi times the integral from c to d, which would be from here to here, which is from zero to three. Next, the outer radius is determined by the distance from the y-axis to the blue function. That would be this distance here. This distance is equal to x, but it must be expressed in terms of y. And it's determined by the function y equals negative x squared plus four. So we actually have to take y equals negative x squared plus four 
and solve it for x because this distance here is equal to x. So let's go ahead and move the x squared to the other side and then also subtract y on both sides. And if we square root both sides, we have x equals the square root of four minus y. And we're in the first quadrant here, so, so we're not gonna have a plus or minus here. So big R of y is equal to the square root of four minus y. And luckily this is squared, so that's gonna undo the square root, minus little r of y. Well, little r of y is this distance from the y-axis to the vertical line. And this is always gonna equal one. So the inner radius is just equal to one, and then we have it squared, and we integrate now with respects to y. Let's go ahead and square these. So we have pi, this would be four minus y, minus one, with respects to y. Let's go ahead and clean this up a little bit. Looks like we'll just have three minus y. Let's go ahead and find the antiderivative here. So we have three y minus y to the second divided by two. And we'll evaluate this at three and zero. So first we'll replace y with three. And then replace y with zero and both of these terms would be equal to zero. This comes out to nine pi over two, which would be the volume of the solid that we see here. Okay, the next video we'll talk about how to use the washer method when rotating about axes other than the x and y axis. Thank you for watching.